maybe someone she was with sold her that night into a sex trafficking ring. At this point, if that is true, she could be anywhere. She could literally be anywhere. Some of my content has mention of extreme violence, sexual assault, and or other triggering content. Discretion is advised. In the early hours of May 2nd, 2017, 18-year-old Desiree Ferris disappeared. There is still no answers in this case almost six years later. Where did Desi go and will we ever be able to get her back? Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to Code 187. Murderers keep on murdering. I am here every week to tell the stories. Um, <laughs> gets a little ominous sometimes, but I'm so glad I have you guys here to pick me up. Um, yeah, so today's video was requested um, and I had heard about it, I knew about it, um, but I didn't know the gritty details. Um, this case is super sad, um, but it's unresolved, so maybe we can get some attention brought to this case. Desiree Ann Ferris, who also went by Desi, was known for her bubbly and warm personality. In all the pictures, she is just beautiful, and she dreamed of one day being a model. She was very close to her mother, and she had like this huge family of nine siblings that included step siblings and all kinds of things. And so she was just part of this big, wonderful family. And she was super close to her mom. And the day that she went missing was just one day before her mom's birthday. So already it's very unusual. Desiree was a very sweet and a very kind person, and it worried a lot of people that maybe she's too trusting of other people. Desi lived in Liberty, Missouri, a town north, kind of east of Kansas City. On May 1st, 2017, Desi and her sister were picked up from their home by a man that they both knew very well. So like a a mutual friend. Um, the three of them spent most of the day together. Um, this included going to some uh, abandoned houses that were known for drug activity. Around 4.30, the friend dropped the girls off at a McDonald's at 31st Street and Van Brunt Boulevard in Kansas City, Missouri. This is in the southeast part of the city. From there, a man that I will call Mark, who was known for being in and out of prison, picked up the two sisters and drove them to another McDonald's location along Route 291 in Liberty. So what happened here was they got picked up in Liberty, went to wherever they did stuff all day, dropped off at a McDonald's kind of down here in the city and then was taken again all the way back up to Liberty. So that's kind of the, the weird way that they went about that day. From here is where stories get a little wishy-washy. Um, while some accounts say that Desiree's sister was dropped off at home, and Desiree and this man went off together. Um, other people say that her sister was dropped off at McDonald's and then Desi and this other man went on from there. Um, while Desiree and Mark were together, so either way, 
she is now without her sister with this man going around the city. When interviewed by police, Mark claimed he took Desiree to his house located in Kansas City between the hours of 1020 and 11 p.m. Desiree sent 23 text messages to the first friend that she was with and while she was there with Mark and she said, I want to go home. So she was telling this other friend that she, I think felt a little more comfortable with that she was just ready to go home in the night. On May 2nd, 2017, so this is in the early hours, Desi texted her sister at 1 a.m. stating that she was on her way home. At this point, it is believed that Desi was in South Kansas City, Missouri. The last time her phone was active, she was in a part of town that is more known for drug activity and crime. Um, at about 2 a.m., Desi's mother said that her last call was to an unknown person. Um, and then that is the same person she texted a few hours later and then nothing. And there's been no activity since then. She pretty much disappeared from here. Desi had plans. Like I said earlier, it was her mom's birthday and it was her her sister and her were planning on baking a cake and having this fun thing for her mom's birthday. Um, they even like bought all the ingredients to make her a cake. Um, so it was very odd that she didn't come home that day or in the days after. Her mother looked at the phone records and there wasn't any activity after May 2nd. So her mother reported her missing. There were a lot of searches for Desi, but so far none have gained any leads. The area where her phone was last pinged has been searched multiple times by her family, just boots on the ground going around the neighborhood, and also by investigators and police. Her family continues to do searches all the time. There is searches all the time for her. There have been many sightings. I say this very um, lightly because none have been confirmed, but there has been sightings of her in Kansas City as well as other cities and states. Some people have labeled her as a runaway, but police and her family and even I don't think that that is true. The two men that were with Desi that day have been questioned many times. The friend that was with her earlier that day seems to be not involved. Um, she texted him while she was with the second male friend and stated she wanted to go home. So it kind of paints the picture that she was comfortable with him. Mark's story, however, has changed a few times. Mostly small details, but it is still a red flag for investigators. Desi's family believes that he is involved. Since Desi has not been found, there is not much evidence that there's a homicide at all, but there's nothing to say that it is not. There were rumors around Kansas City that she was killed, put in a barrel with cement, and put into a body of water. This is still a possibility, but it has not been confirmed and no one has ever found Desi or any part of her. There is a huge theory that Desi was sex trafficked. I think this is very likely of a scenario. Um, maybe someone she was with sold her that night into a sex trafficking ring. At this point, if that is true, she could be anywhere. She could literally be anywhere. I hope that she is alive um, and she can come back to her family, but sex trafficking is not a good scenario either. 
So whatever happened in this case is not a good one. We lost her. We don't know where she is. And that is really scary. Other than the sex trafficking theory, there is the theory that someone did kill her. Um, we don't know why. Um, she could have overdosed and they freaked out. Um, I, I wish that they would come forward if that did happen. Um, she could have been killed because she had fought back against a rape. I mean, there's a lot of different possibilities here. But she is listed as a missing person. We don't need, we don't know if she is out there. Um, and like I said, hopefully she is. Hopefully she's out there and doing well, but the likelihood of that happening six years later is very rare. So if you have any information, there is a reward leading to the arrest and conviction in Desiree's case. Desiree Ferris is a Caucasian female with brown hair and brown eyes. She was born in 1999. She stands 5'1 and 95 pounds, very petite. Um, Desiree has a birthmark on her abdomen and a one inch scar on her left forearm. She was last known to be wearing a white or like a cream colored top uh, sweatpants, a tan purse, and a pink fuzzy jacket. She goes again by the nickname Desi. If you have any information, please contact the Liberty Police Department at 816-439-4700, or you can go to the Greater Kansas City Crime Stoppers Tips Hotline. Um, I will post all of that information below as well as my resources for this case. Um, this, this case breaks my heart. Like I see pictures of Desiree, Desi, and she's just beautiful and she's so full of life. And I remember being that age and thinking you're invincible and thinking like you have this whole future. And unfortunately, it seems like she will not get that. And that's extremely sad. Um, my heart goes out to Desi's family. I know that they are kind of making the rounds on podcasts and things, um, getting her case out there and her case known. Um, I think that there are people who know what happened. Um, and I really encourage those people to come forward for her. Um, come forward for you because I'm sure it weighs on you, but come forward for Desiree. Like she deserves that. Um, so I will post those numbers below. Thank you so much for listening to Desiree's story. Thank you to the person who requested Desiree's case. Um, this person and I contact each other a lot. Um, she gives me lots of really, really good cases. So if you're listening, hi. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you're here. And I'm glad that everybody's here to, to hear Desiree's story and hopefully get more out there. So I will be back again next week, um, <laughs> here again, um, but I, I really appreciate you guys. So the podcast is coming out and will be out April 5th. If you're listening to this ap after April 5th, it is posted on my YouTube. If you are listening before, that is when this is coming out. I am so excited for you guys to hear it. There are equally as great cases on the podcast. So be looking forward to that. Go and follow the social media I have listed um, in the description box below, our email, our Instagram, our Facebook, our Facebook discussion group that we now have, um, along, along with other things too, TikTok, all of that. So go there, interact with me, um, share these cases, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Alrighty, so Sarah, what's our uh, case about today? Well, um, going on the mystery thing, you kind of led me right into it, is this one is so mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can curse. 
but <laughs> if I could, I'd say it was a mind F uh, of a case because okay. this one I like have spent nights just wondering what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very mysterious. I, you may know it because it's a pretty popular case. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good one. And you'll become obsessed just like I am. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't planning on being obsessed with the new murder case, but now it's gonna be like my wife's gonna be like, what are you doing? I'm looking at this murder case, trying to figure this stuff out here, because it just pew, blew my mind. <laughs> Right, right. I I get on like a case, and I will lose sleep over <laughs> trying to figure out what happened. Um, and this is one of those cases for sure. Gotcha. Okay. All right, you ready to jump in? I'm ready to jump in. Let's go. Okay. So we start off in a big gymnasium of a local high school. Okay. In the far corner, rolled up in a wrestling mat. Standing up vertical was the body of Kendrick Johnson, 17 years old. I've never heard that one. Just all out in the open like that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm starting you off crazy. So we have, I want you to picture it because the pictures are interesting in this case. Okay. Um, so you have like those big when you think of wrestling mats, you think of something small. This was huge. Yeah. It was heavy. Um, and like I said, they were standing up vertically. Gotcha. And you couldn't even see the body. Mm -hmm. um, all you could see was his white sock okay. in his, from his foot poking out of the top. Gotcha. Right. So um, upside down. Yep. Yeah. Upside down rolled up in the mat have you do you know this one yet no uh, uh okay i'm sure some of the people listening are like i know what this is um <laughs> all right so um just so you get the picture the mat was around six feet tall okay and that is when it was found upright at six feet okay um when rolled up the mat left a 14 inch hole in diameter in the center Kendrick's body was down in the mat, so you could barely see his foot. Mm -hmm. And Kendrick's shoulders measured 19 across. Gotcha. So already, the mat's 14 inches. He's 19. Yeah. So something had to have happened there. I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any of the content for Code 187, please click that subscribe button, that like button, that share button. Help us out. Help us grow. Um, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, yeah, check us out on there. Give us some ratings. Um, tell us what you think. We're also across every social media on Code187, so we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, I think that's it, um, and of course YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe um, if you like our content and spread the word. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.